to like I think I'm still grieving. I never like said, and I feel like um, YouTube used to be a safe safe place for me. But I've experienced grief, guys. My older sister, like she, she the way she left us, it was. There were no answers up to like, he was in pain. The last six months though are so strenuous, so strenuous to my dad. Guys, I've gone through a relationship breakup in my life, but that doesn't even trigger you. But breakup from friendships, especially like female friendship, it hurts. Like, I don't know, like it hurts so much. I think to say, like we're face to face, I am Modeya, but you got nothing to tell. Guys, I really made a mistake to move here, to move in Nairobi. Like I feel like some things, like when I went through a breakup, I just, I just told my therapist, like we are in a in a one on one with a therapist. When I experienced like social media bullying, I'm that type of my man, my man, my man, my man. Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kemto Bear. Is it if it's your first time seeing this? Gorgeous, if I may say so myself. Kemto Bear. Consider liking this video, subscribing, and leave a comment down below. Okay, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what, what's up, how you feeling. Ask me any question. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. We're on the road to 50,000 subscribers. June is my birthday month and I want to wish birthday shout outs to everyone born in June or Cancer and Gemini, Gemini stars or anyone from now henceforth always leave your birthday comments on the comment section below and on the next video I'm going to do a shout out for you but today I'm going to do because I'm starting the role 21st, today is 15, 21st of June, a beautiful gorgeous African Princess <laughs> was born. Me. If you wanna wish me a gift, some money, <laughs> but no. Anyway, it helps. Thank you for Better Help for sponsoring a segment of this video. Better Help, B E D T E R H E L P. Better Help is the world largest therapy service and it's 100 percent online with better help you can tap into a network of over 30,000 licensed and experienced therapists who can help you with a wide range of issues get started you just answer a few questions about your needs and preferences in therapy that way better help can match you with the right therapist from their network. Then you can talk to your therapist however you feel comfortable, whether it's via text, chat, phone, or video call. You can message your therapist at any time and schedule live session when it's convenient for you. If your therapist isn't the right fit for you for any reason, you can switch to a new therapist at no additional charge. With better help, you get the same professionalism and quality you expect from in-office therapy, but with a therapist who is custom picked for you, more scheduling flexibility and at a more affordable price. So guys, if you want to book a one-on-one -on -one session with a therapist, that suits your needs and your flexible flexibility click on the link down below for better like to find your therapist at better help you will get 10 percent off your first month if you sign up with my link which is http.ps.betterhelp.com slash kemunto uh, which I'll put, of course, in the description box, the first line of the description box. Just scroll up on this video. You'll be able to see the description box. 
uh, if you really feel like talking to someone uh, and for those who are interested, the link will be down below and you're getting 10% by using my discount code came to it will be applied automatically if you use my link. Because I feel like every one of us uh, needs someone to talk to. We've had those times, your friends, your family, your co-workers, they are not your therapist, guys. You'll get into deep, deep waters, sharing your innermost vulnerable, like, experiences in life. Like, ask me. I know. I will tell you. But since, like, neighbor, like, your stranger, like, they are not someone to talk to. And a therapist, a professional therapist will not judge you. Actually, they will help you. They enable you to be your better self and consider better help because, yeah, I have, I have, this is why I'm always glowing. So yeah, guys, actually talking about that, I'm going to be talking a lot about a lot of things, like some things. Like when I went through a breakup, I just I just told my therapist like we are in a in a one on one with a therapist. When I experienced like social media bullying, I talked to my therapist. So that's why like we're going like we're going strong. That's why like I'm in like I'm saying people will ask me how oh, Kimto you are resilient, Kimto you are like strong. Uh this is why like Therapy is, like, therapy is good for my soul. I'll be talking so much about situationships. Uh, I almost left, like, leaving YouTube, like, leaving social media. And I feel like I was quite uh, experiencing, like, um, jealousy, uh, relationships, like, experiencing all these things in the industry that that I am in and basically what helped me what like with like going to therapy what helped me to overcome like uh, social media bullying because I've never experienced bullying online and the best thing like the thing is with uh, keep pad warriors that's how we call them trolls is that they're so busy like bullying you on the social media but when you meet them one-on-one -on -one, guys and I've met my <laughs> that's a story for another day they don't have anything to say like we're face to face I am with Aya, but you got nothing to tell me all that talk 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 all that talk 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 on the internet but you have not got nothing to say to me in front of me but I like Thank God for therapy because if I did not go into therapy, when I meet these people on uh, like face to face, okay, it's not even more like my bullies, like they are one, but they have like different uh, fake accounts that they use, like fake solo accounts that they use because you can tell with time you get to know like the same person, even, even if they use different username, you get how they attack you and what they attack you on but during therapy it helped me because i enrolled in therapy so because if i met them and i did not like have therapy guys i would have been which is not encouraged which i don't encourage also that's why you need to go into therapy i would have because if you tell your sisters your your confidant your comrades about this situation they'll some may encourage you to go back to back, which is not healthy. But with my therapist, like what they told me, like what I learned, what helped me, like to be resilient and be forgiving and be like calm is there's something my therapist told me. When someone says something that triggers you, imagine their words flowing down a stream of water. Watch as their words pass you right by. Words flowing down a stream of water. Watch as their words pass you by. Pass you right by. Calm your mind. Let go of the noise. Instead, turn inward. 
and find solitude. Knowing that your peace is your priority. And that's what I learned and I'm learning and it's helping me a lot, guys. But guys, I don't like regretting, but I just feel like I made the... Like, I love my previous uh, a studio more than this. Like, there's something about this design. I feel like I was... <laughs> cheated out of because i wanted the same design but on this yes i have the good view but am i gonna eat the view like i want my design like i don't like the way and thanks to my sister she like tried to redesign my apartment but the shambles that is going out here it just described my head guys i've been going through it guys there's a minute like i felt like even quitting youtube i felt so much emotions and it was because uh guys i've gone through a relationship breakup in my life but that doesn't even trigger you but breakup from friendships especially like female friendship it hurts like i don't know like it hurts so much i didn't experience this thing in high school and i'm here a big adult my big age i'm experiencing these things because guys believe it or not i'm such an introvert i'm such to myself like i'm an i am my own solitude so like high school primary like I was the quiet girl, the quiet, observing, like, good friend, like, guys, like, but during this big age, um, and you can't even say anything about it, you can't talk about it, you can't scream, you can't shout, because, like, I joke, like, I'm gonna, like, write a book, guys, I joke about it all the time, and, yeah, like, it's so awkward, like, and then this friendship is not like uh, this female friendship is not like real friendship it's like a quitters because i've learned a hard a hard lesson to call people your friends like be careful of people you call friends like don't go out here you're doing like acquaintance you are being acquainted like they are more of a quitent more of a co-worker to be precise yes of course co-workers acquaintance can can grow to the level of all these things but guys i have so many like i can't call them uh trauma but i can call them lessons that i've learned i've experienced grief guys my sister died like she died in a my older sister she died in a very painful painful like she she the way she left us it was there were no answers up to now there are no answers and my dad also died but at least with my dad like there's no like at least but at least with my dad we saw like he was in pain he was sick he he died from the cancer of the throat and, she, and the last six months though are so strenuous so strenuous to my dad and i feel I feel a certain way because I remember very well when I got a call, like, guys, we're going to be talk. we're going to talk a lot. And this is why, like, I just need therapy, guys, because I have such a lot of things that I have not said. And I feel like um, YouTube used to be a safe, safe place for me, but, you know, you never know who's watching. So I'm so thankful that I have someone that I can talk to about when things, someone who's neutral and someone who's professional who can look at things in a wider spectrum and who can actually let me like let out my emotions and then, yeah, because like I remember um, I experienced still grieving. I never like, but at least right now, like it has been 20 years. Okay, my dad died in 2015. My sister died in 2002. I don't, I don't even want to remember the exact day because I have this, like, I have, like, amnesia. Like, I feel like I don't want to 
remember things that are hurting me and that has been my coping mechanism for grieving but at least right now with my sister I'm trying I'm more accepting like I'm more remembering the good memories like I was her favorite sister sorry guys but I was baby's favorite I remember so well so okay how we learned of his of her death so my sister I think she was 29 when she passed away. She was so young. I think she was going to turn 29. And my sister, like, she's the, my eldest sister. She, I don't know if you guys know my sister, who I call my sister, but actually she's my niece. She's called All Things Africa Nana. That's her mom now, the one I'm talking about. So this happened, like, like, I remember I was out from school, I was like I was studying in a primary school called Lily Academy. Guys, I've changed a lot of schools and I think also changing schools has caused me anxiety because I remember when my parents like I'm all over but this is my story and this is what I'm gonna tell you and I'm, you guys know I'm not good at story time. Yeah, so I remember like where was I? I remember I remember like my sister she moved out um she was living we were all living together like me and my whole family my mom and dad were all living in Nairobi like there's a lot of story time about me but I never feel comfortable to or safe enough to share it because I don't know, like, people try to use things against you when you say them. Anyway, yeah. So, we used to live together. I'm going to make it in a nutshell. We used to live together and then my sister moved out. And it was not even a year when she started living alone that she... <sighs> she passed on. So... And this is why, like, it was so hard. Like, um, the one thing that this bullies online attacked me for was me living with my sister at my big age. And it was actually a trauma that I fear. Even up to now, my sister have, my sister have to call me, like, all of my sisters. And imagine I have eight sisters. They'll have to call me several times a day in the morning, before morning snack, like, for all, oh, Five times a day, different times. You can imagine just to know that I'm good, I'm there, and nothing has happened to me because uh, losing our sister caused us to have a lot of trauma that we are still healing from. I am so scared of being alone. That's why maybe I like to see like my four walls so I can know what's happening because the way she passed on... So, okay, I remember I was coming out from school. Uh, I was still in primary school, so I was coming out from primary school, and I got home. <laughs> when I got home, I don't remember well. I'm telling you, I have a, like amnesia. I used to remember this day so well. And I remember like my mom was crying. And I remember a week before she passed on because I love going to the salon a lot. That's why maybe I don't even like going to the salon nowadays because I used to like going like that was our thing. We'll go to the salon. I'll just like, like. I'll get my hair blow dried. She'll get me. She'll pay for me to get my hair blow dried, and I was so little. And then I'll watch her. I'll just like like self care that day. But right now, like when I go to the salon, I have fear of anxiety. Like I don't know if it correlates, but these are the things I'm working on during my like therapy sessions, so that I can 
stop being this anxious because I think I have anxious and like anxiety like my anxiety levels are to the roof to the roof especially I mean when I meet strangers I'm not a snob guys I'm just an introvert who has anxiety especially around people that I am not close with and people take it in the wrong way but that's how it is so okay so this is what happened um so my mom was like crying like on the streets of our home she was like no not my baby her nickname was baby not my baby not my baby this cannot happen and was like my other sisters i think it was julie she was comforting us and then i remember like it was not like she was found like she's passed on on her home she died a natural death and then when 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 I slept that night, I remember knowing that my sister has passed on. I dreamt that she has not passed on, that she's gone, like she's gone to another, like she's gone abroad because she's always wanted to go abroad. And actually that's and actually to add pain to everything, a dream came true when I think she had applied for a green card. Not, not I think. Of course, she had applied for a green card, and when we buried her, she died. Like, like I think it was December eleventh. Like guys, and then we buried her. I think on twenty or twenty one December. I don't like to remember these things. So, like, uh, on December or around like January, like yeah, January this when you get the results. There was a there was a letter from like she won the like she found out she won the green card and it just handed woods to injury because this was a dream so I used to have this dream that sometimes I dream things and then they come true like I don't know like I can like foresee or something I don't know but I'm so scared of of to tap in that like I can see it from other people but I can't see my own future or something so I dreamt and I always kept having dreams and she'll come into my dream like vividly like she's just away in a foreign country that's America of course like she's in America and she's living a good life like she's living well like not to worry she'll comfort me in my dreams for a long time and then my life changed like that's when like after a year or two years after that my parents like all of them resigned like my mom was working and my dad was working and I think my mom resigned first and then my dad joined they went through uh like they went through hell my mom my mom you see my mom like she's well built like she's a full figure woman she lost weight like <laughs> Like, her first daughter has just passed on. She's just changed her usual routine. She's, like, resigned. She's, like, who? Resigned or retired? I think resigned. She's just, on it because she was still young at that time. Not the retirement age. Then, we moved. She took us, like, the other... Uh, my other sister already, they are, had already finished school. I had not finished my school yet. I think I remember I was in class eight. So when I'm coming back to my school, they say that something like I, they can't sign me for KCSC or so, some bullshit. That's why I don't even like Lily Academy up to now. They did me dirty. So my parents had to move me with them to go to a primary school in the village, deep down the village. You can imagine the shock. I'm a Nairobi. I'm born in Nairobi. I've studied Nairobi. So I'm transitioning a different route. Everyone, like, I'm an introvert. I'm a shy girl. I am not, like, when when I go into a room, I go at the back. In this school, I became top two. I was the center of attraction. Only the one Nairobi. Only the one Nairobi. Everyone used to know me in that school, Kebaba Primary School. Shout out to 
to anyone who is from Keboba Primary School. I remember there was a boy who was number one and then I became number two. So the principal, the, the principal, or it was headmaster, the headmaster really liked me a lot. So remember, I'm, I'm grieving my sister. At the same time, I'm adapting to my new surroundings and, and, and I'm adapting being like, uh, um, at least, or the it girl you can say in this new school because they used to wonder how I talk because you guys know how people talk in the village with an accent. Okay, we still have an accent, but the village people accent is way high. So the way I talk, the way I like, I carry myself, it became an it girl situation. I attracted more attention. Everyone was like, and I didn't like it. So I developed so much anxiety. I used to forget things. I remember there was this one teacher from primary school. She came and then I experienced something else, but I'm not comfortable sharing here. I don't feel safe enough to share here yet. So, so many things happened. And then my mom is grieving also. My mom, like, the village is a new surrounding. She's a working woman. so. She is starting a business, she used to have a potion meal, a bar, a pool, and things were going well. Like, I adjusted, I adapted. I feel like everything that is thrown to you, like, I feel like I always have this one thing with God. I pray to God that I never miss my mark on this earth. Like, whatever I do, I shouldn't miss my mark. If I experience something difficult, this is a lesson, this is a preparation for the strong person, like I believe every struggles I went through when in my childhood, that's what is building me to the person I am right now. Like people who know me, know me like I am, like people like to be around me, like people who really treasure and they treasure me. Like I am not even saying this, like the way they, like people always want to be around me because I'm just, I give positive energy, positive vibes because yeah, yeah, I don't want to miss my mark. Whatever God wants me to do, that's what I'll do. That's how I I am. And that's how grateful I am. I, I, I am like, yeah. I don't like like dwelling in negative energy. Like, and that's why people like, dump into me people will dump their issues their problems their situations like they'll they carry out like all because i am that safe space yeah so yeah so that's what happened like with my death of my sister and then i don't want to dwell much on it because i'm attending therapy just because of that and also and a lot of many things also because I don't I think I have like like every like every boyfriend I've dated they've always been long distance and I feel it has a connection like I don't want to get close enough because I don't want to get hurt when you're away because I have this like I want what well, like when I'm in a in a relationship or when like I want to be there like I want to breathe you I want to be with you all the time I feel like you going away because I feel like I'm losing you like I have that attachment issue like I'm that type of my man my man my man my man like when I'm with my man is my man my man my man when I'm with my friend my friend my friend my friend my sister my sister my sister my sister my mama my mama, my mama. like I am that person I feel so attached like when I'm with a like when I'm vibing like I don't even use my phone anything I like fully like indulge in our life our, our situationship so when my dad okay so my dad my dad his death we saw it coming so as long as it was painful as much as it was painful i felt a type of relief because he was suffering he was not eating he was like using a tube and i feel so much guilt because i was not there I was in this 
I bleeped this one. I was in a job. I'm like I seen a job. So I didn't have time to go and be with my dad. But thank God my mom, she was there. Like my mom, like in life I wanna be my the way my mom was like to my my person, my partner. She was there. She was a nurse to my dad. Like my dad was so comfortable. Like I remember because my dad had diabetes. My dad had what else? Uh, yeah, she had, my dad had diabetes, and then later in life, that's when she he discovered he had cancer. So, my mom took care of my dad, like, my dad was, like, comfortable, like, you know what I mean, like, my, da my mom was there, like, she will clean up, even with that, my mom will clean up your vomit like when you're sick she will take care of you like my and remember my mom hates the sight of vomit but when it comes to her children and her part her husband my dad she was hands-on she was completely hands-on with us and that's why i love my mom so much and i hope in life like i will find something much much better than that because they also had their issues but they were there there was love there was love that was the main thing there was love there was my dad was very good hearted like she she they will argue today and tomorrow they've made up and they've gone on a date and they would buy my dad would buy my mom an outfit because they loved outfits that's where i get from they love fashion and they never got the thing where their children ask where we got about thrifting because they don't like second-hand clothes. They like new brand clothes. And I'm so happy, like, during Mother's Day, I was able to give my mom the Fitville uh, new brand shoes. And she was so happy. Yeah. Anyway, so where was I? Okay, so, like, where, how did I learn the death of my daddy? At daddy, I used to call her Baba. Baba. Guys, you know, I've never deleted my dad's phone number on my phone, on my contact. I still have it there. So I remember my sister would tell will tell me like you need to come home you need to come home you need to see dad you need to see dad and my dad will say when i call my dad my dad will say no don't worry i don't want you to lose your job i'm gonna be okay we're gonna see each other i want to see you when when i'm healthy i don't want you to cry when you see me and then i remember that day i was uh, coming i was in a day shift it was raining really heavily so you know guys my my job was, used to be on Gong Road, so I was working, and then there was like, I think something was holed up, or there was traffic holed up, I don't know, like, that time, there was a lot of traffic along Gong Road, so I, I alighted around Upper Hill, yeah, and I just felt relieved, because if you know me, I don't like walking, and I had these high heel shoes, and I was just walking. I was like, I, I wasn't feeling like reaching home. And I was tired, remember, from the day shift. Because my work is to stand a lot. So I was tired. It was raining hard. But I felt comfort when the rain was hitting me. I was felt really, really comfortable when the rain was hitting me. Like, I felt like, like, it was like, I didn't want to reach home. I feel like looking back now it's like as if i knew i didn't want to get the news that my 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 baba baba is dad my baba has passed away i didn't want to like it was like i was prolonging i walked i walked i walked slowly i walked slowly up to town when i and i was being rained on so when i but i felt so nice I felt like, like, harmony. I don't know. So, my sister Amy was like, when I opened the door, she was like, Baba, me kufa. And I was like, 
No, I told you I have this problem when I, like, I'm in denial. Like, I'm denial when something bad happens, I'm in denial. Like, my denial process, like, that's like my grieving. My denial process is, like, so long. I was like, I didn't say okay or no. I was just like... So when we went to the burial, both I remember both my burials. At, when my dad died, I, it was 2015, so I was my big age. I was big. I didn't look at his co like at his coffin. I don't like. I want even my sister's death. I didn't look at her coffin. I refused and I refused. So, but. The grieving process after it has gone like in a circle, I cried. I cried a lot. I cried at the burial of my dad. I cried at the burial of my sister. I was in denial. I will live like they're still there. Or sometimes I try and forget completely. I'll have amnesia completely and believe that they are still there. For my sister, lately, like let's say like two years ago, that's when I've come into terms that she's really gone and she's never going to come back. But the good thing now is I remember the good time. I don't have bad dreams. And for a long time, I lived with my sisters. I've never lived with any friend, actually. I've lived with my roommates. have always been my sisters. Like when right after I moved out of my mom's house, I went to my brother's house and his wife, and then I went to my sister's. And then two years I moved into this studio, like this is the same complex, but different houses. Uh, it's been two years. I was so afraid to be on my own because of those experiences in my life, we can say traumas. But I'm healing now. I'm healing. And this is... Through therapy. Th therapy is, heals the soul. So I've been... Like, like now, uh, I remember my, my sister and my dad in good times. Like the village I go to, that's my dad's, like where he was born. Like where, where his ancestors, where my ancestors are... And so whenever I go home right now, when I see his grave, when I see my sister's grave, they're both buried in my village. Actually, just outside my house, that's where they're, they were buried. Ever since, like, now when I go to the village and I see their grave, like, I don't try and try away. I, I like talk to them. I know they're not there. I know their soul is up there and they're looking down at us, struggling in this life since they left us. Because one thing about my sister who passed away, Pepe, Josephine was her, her, her full name. Ever since, like, like, they, uh, my dad and my sister, they were life of the party they walk in the room they are full of life they light up the room like they were so like they they give they pour into your cup like yeah and uh yeah and i right now like uh when i remember them i remember the good memories uh, the good times and whatever they they left in us. Like right now, when I look at Ella, Ella is my sister's sister's daughter, my niece, Mama Ella, raising Ella. When I look at Ella, I see so much of my dad, my the personality and the character. My dad was like that. I see a lot. Like she's such a vibrant person. Everywhere she walks, even strangers, they like she's such a people's people's person. Yeah. So yeah, so they live 
they leave little bits of them in us and we are all not in this world for a long time so as long as we're in it now we should be thankful be grateful wake up with positiveness even though like some things that are happening in my life like i feel like they should be better i just wake up very grateful for what i have now and i know what i'll have what i'll have if you are very comfortable with what you have now like for example i'm very comfortable with my growth that i have now not comfortable no i'm grateful for the 40 are we 42 for the 40,000 plus subscribers k tribe that i have acquired right now and i know with god's grace persistence consistence and working hard the sky is the limit because if i'm not grateful for the 40,000 i have now do you think even when i reach 1 million 300,000 subscribers 500,000 subscribers 200,000 subscribers do you think i'll be grateful i will want to be in 10 million so i experience gratitude and for whatever like guys i am not perfect and sometimes i feel like lashing out but i am i don't anyway i don't know if i will include the other i will i will include another post another like my activities a weekly vlog because we got to do a lot we got to do a lot we like for the past one or two months I had experienced some anxiety. I like I was so tired. I was burnt out, like totally burnt out with doing YouTube and I felt like like two, three years ago I wanted to delete my account, like personally delete all my social networks account for the for the situation I encountered like three years ago that three years ago so during that three years i've been in and out of such a mood and my house like two months ago i was burnt out with the with the consistent posting with the consistent like working like it has really like stretching because i have had no days of like working for yourself you work even like it's 24 hours round but now i'm experiencing like i tried to do some cleaning even my sister called me uh we experienced this vacuum i'm gonna put all those videos there uh, i think after this one and we went to an event which i was so anxious i had anxiety to the roof but thank god to <laughs> thank god to my person i have like he told me like go out there and talk to people reach out the worst that can happen is a no but reach out so yeah so i went and i reached out and i met so many of my favorite youtubers or small stuff everyone that happened yesterday i'm talking today on a wednesday today is thursday i experienced like like it was such a vibe on vibe on vibe positive vibes and even someone said something in like that one person i don't know i hope they heal i hope they heal i hope like i am totally sorry for whatever you feel like i did or offended you i'm totally sorry for that and i hope you heal i hope you 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 heal from whatever you are suffering from because i don't know guys there are people who are hurt out here people who are hurt and they'll carry it in every relationship or in every acquaintance they acquire so so yeah i'll talk more on that with my therapist because i feel like this is not a safe place here to talk about it and yeah Thank God.
better help is an online service i was like mm, this makeup is expensive camera is expensive but most importantly live a calm live like I, I need to reach 100k by the end of the year but right now we can reach 50 is that too much to us we are 40 please reach 50 okay okay 50 subscribe guys that's my birthday present subscribe like share paypal patreon thank you for all my patreon uh patreon patrons and thank you to all my paypals paypals i see you and god always pour into you okay now <laughs> so today we have a lot to talk about i feel like i've outgrown this house I feel like I need to go to our one bedroom. Like I'm working towards to go our one bedroom. I must not let fear. Even though Uchome Ime Panda financial has increased. Also, my my rates increases too because I need I need to have a one bedroom. At least I can make my living room a studio because this is this ain't it. This is giving me depression and anxiety. I need to upgrade my space. I have outgrown this space. I feel like I made a mistake because the rent I'm paying in this studio and they keep on increasing. They increase it. I'm not even here two years. Oh, my, my contract. My contract is how long? They increase, they've increased it. The rent, the rent I'm paying here, I can get a one bedroom in where Kenyans live. I'm not saying I, I'm living in an upper area, but it's somehow katikati a middle na rich. The rent I'm paying here, I love everything about this, don't get me wrong. It's just the space. What is wrong with this thing? It's just the space is like limiting me. It's causing me anxiety. I love everything. I love the service. They also have a one bedroom, but the one bedroom is just risking too much now. Uh, but maybe I can afford it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If I get someone, why is it doing this? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. The right hand, like, maybe ni bate kachuma imi. Like, yeah, that's what, like, I love everything that this space has to offer. Like, it's in the... Unezaita ushago. Ushago, ushago, ivi. Ushago za Nairobi. Unezaita ivo. It's nice. I love everything about it. I love the services that are included here. Even though I used the swimming pool only twice, but I need to start using it. But it's because it's cold. But, Why? I feel like the way they, like, I feel like even next year when I'm renewing my contract, they'll increase. There's also one bedrooms here. Don't, don't get me wrong, and two bedrooms, which will be so nice with me, but I don't know, like, with my tax bracket right now, I can't afford a uh, one bedroom. Like, it's a difference of maybe 5,000 or 6,000 Kenya shillings. But I can't afford it for now. I can't afford it. Maybe mungwa mwage barakazake or I work 10 times harder or just be sugar baby. <laughs> no. I'm joking. Am I? Anyway, yeah, because I wouldn't mind moving to, yeah, to the same complex, but another like, yeah, because they also have new, like, they have a new building complex also. Just two minutes. One minute walk for me. Even like I wouldn't mind because they are st they are empty right now. They are empty. People have really moved out since they increased the rent. People have moved out. Even the person who introduced me to this place, they have moved out because the rent has increased. And I feel like of late, I feel like I have a fear of not being successful. Like I have a fear of dying, not reaching my full potential. I feel like I have so much more to do. I feel like I'm slagging. I feel like I need to do more 
more and more collaboration but yet again I have this social anxiety to the par but yeah I'm so lucky that my sisters even if I'm living alone I can spend like there's a day spent a full week in my other sister like there are three of my sisters in Nairobi and they both live different areas of Nairobi but we are within each other so like 30 20 minutes far apart so I usually go I do a sleepover there so when I'm feeling like a little bit lonely down I go go there I go there and it uplifts my spirits yeah so the, that's the part the part of living alone that I actually hate and I actually hate and this is why I like also watching mukbangs because I don't know when I see people eating on TV it encourages and gives me an appetite my dad will draw on his grave right now when I say hey, Munto, when I'm here alone I don't feel like eating I cook and I don't even feel like eating I don't even have a fridge yet because at least when I cook I can put it in a fridge and I can eat as a leftover at least that way when I'm watching mukbang. But I, I have lost my appetite. Living alone. Like, I used to laugh when people say, I can't eat alone, I can't eat alone, I can't eat alone. Mm. So my dad was like, my dad knew I love food. So she, he will roll on his grill. And I say, Kemuto has lost appetite. He will like, Kemuto will eat slowly. That's my dad. Kemuto will eat slowly until the this comes to find that. Is it still eating? I don't know if you understand the joke, but in Sweden, I came out to keep uh, and call it a Jojo. Jojo, Jojo, at a cooler pole pole, but you chuck a little bit of a shake was a honey. Back at us, Muzia Kujama at a patra I don't know, like it doesn't make it's no, it doesn't bring the same vibe like the way my dad used to say about me. Anyway, yeah. Are you living alone? Are you experiencing anything that I've talked in this video? Comment down below. I would love to see your comments. Anyway, that's the end of today's video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And before we go, let's do an OOTD of the day. I was going to do a collaboration, but I think that the person I'm doing it is running late or... It, they are super packed. Anyway, that's the outfit of today. I saw pants. That's how they look. The ass is assy. Oh, I've worn a blue panty up. It's not showing. I saw pants. Size. I think it's size. I'll put the size. And then new look tank top. That's how it look. And Timu. Coach, how are we loving it? How are we loving our look? Should I stand up, Kabisa? <sighs> no, check my videos. Okay, guys, to this, I don't think I will manage to.